Hey there, TJ here, and welcome to Yeah The D's, where I'm going over our round one win of the AFLW, the elimination final loss for the VFL, and I'll give some thoughts on the upcoming game against the Pies in the qualifying final. Let's start with the AFLW, and 8,412 people, including myself, made their way to Icon Park for the first club game without Daisy Pierce. Uh, how will the forward line function without her was a big question going into this game, and it worked quite fine which was lovely. It was Tyler Hanks's 50th game for the club and we had the unveiling of the season seven premiership flag. So a great contest to begin with. We got on top of the momentum early, but was unable to capitalise, kicking the first three before Alyssa Bannon kicked the first one for us. Collingwood are a good side. They've been in the AFLW since the start, so they're able to try get that continuality with their players. They uh, won seven games last year, so it was going to be a good contest to begin with here. Just couldn't capitalise on our momentum early, and then uh, they were able to kick two goals. They had some straight kicking, and uh, Bree Davey was really driving the ball for them throughout this, this time. Got out to a 16-point lead by halfway through that second quarter, and then that's when the momentum started to swing, and Georgia Campbell was able to get our second goal for the game, and you could really feel us start to take hold of the match as this second quarter went, but we didn't really get the reward until this third quarter, where we got some of the best footy I think I've ever seen from us in the AFLW. It was just smashing D's footy out of the center, uh, getting some great ruck taps down, some handball chains moving forward of the contest and into our forward line to a leading forward and that gave us the next eight goals of the contest and uh, nine in a row if you count the one here from the second quarter kept Collingwood to four points in the second half which was some amazing defense they really only had maybe five or six opportunities to score in that whole second half um, so it was a really impressive de defensive display from the girls here. Great display by Georgia Campbell here in only her second game. She played her first game was against Brisbane last year, and then she had illness that kept her out for the rest of the season. Uh, it's good to have her back. She's got a lot of talent and uh, seems to fit into our team balance quite well. Eden Zanker got plenty of opportunity. Uh, her and Kate Hall working together in that forward half is awesome. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Bruce and Green, the way that they've sort of got a bit of a tandem. These two tall forwards moving around the forward line, creating space for each other, taking marks. It's um, really exciting to watch. This Shelley Heath goal was wild. She got absolutely cleaned up whilst taking the kick, landed on her head and just continued on. With it, she just got on with the game. She had a fantastic game doing that defensive role on Davy, which helped change the momentum. She really shut her down as we went on and just stacked on these goals. Eden Zanker there, one goal three at that point. Kate Hall kicking a goal. T Taylor Harris, great through the air, just going through the ruck sometimes, going in through the forward line. Uh, she's an absolute talent. Shelley Heath got her second goal. She'd only kicked two goals before that in the league. Eden Zanker, two goals, three. For the game and Alyssa Bannon topped it off with her third goal for the game and isn't she just an exciting live wire just as the game went on we really saw our connection with all the players get better and better they were knowing where to run where to create space kicking to players on good leads and giving them good opportunities to take marks it was yeah a really really impressive second half I've rewatched it quite a few times because it's so enjoyable to watch it's just such great D's footy and if this is uh, an example of what we'll see for the season, we're going to give it, give back to back a really, really good crack. That premiership is definitely within reach with the team that we have and the way that we're going. Yeah, just seeing some traits sort of like from the other days trickle down. Like Tyler Hanks kind of reminds me a little bit of Petrarca, the way that she moves through the midfield and shakes her hips to get out of tackles. Westy is a little bit like Viney, the way she enters contests. She's putting her head down over the ball and just driving through. Uh, Mike and reminds me a little bit of Langdon, a bit of running carry, the way she just throws the ball onto her boot. So I think um, some of these uh, sort of traits or at least similarities are coming through in the style of uh, some of the, the way some of these players are playing, which is uh, really exciting. We're just seeing these girls go to another level each time. It was beautiful to see Daisy Pierce down there on the day as well, but uh, yeah, our forward line is functioning fantastic without her, which was something that I'd be a little bit worried about. But the added pace of Bannon and then McNamara on the wing is a real weapon for us. It's going to be daunting for a lot of teams to come up against us, and I think we might see that against GWS this week. Here, a bit of a weaker side. We could really go out there and just do some damage to that team and really really put on some points and really help our percentage for for this season and for the 10 games that we have to nail before going into the final series
onto the votes for this game and I gave Eliza McNamara one vote. And wow, have we missed her running dash, her setup of goals, her pressure that she puts on. Gave two votes to Taylor Harris, who was strong in the air, one of the better performers in the first half and just did heaps around the ground as well as uh, getting on the scoreboard. Gave three votes to Tyler Hanks, who was amazing through the midfield. It was used through many, many chains going through and helped propel the ball forward. Gave four votes to Alyssa Bannon. She had 17 touches, three goals for the day, worked up and down the field and uh, was an absolute menace for Collingwood. Gave five votes to Kate Herr, who absolutely monstered the third and helped swing the game's momentum and helped capitalise on it as well. But the six votes and best on ground for me goes to Shelley Heath for just an absolutely amazing game. She was absolutely everywhere and did all the tough stuff. Held Bray Davey for the day, which was a huge influence for the game. 11 tackles, two goals, four score involvements is amazing for a player in her position. On to the VFL now, and this was hugely disappointing as a football supporter I want to win a flag in all three I want to win a flag at the AFL the VFL and the AFLW and unfortunately the team management for this game and for our elimination final pulled way too many players out that could have been eligible for this game like Jordan Wo Woden Disco Turner Adam Tomlinson Bailey Laurie all easily could have played in this game but they were all held out in case there's any injuries in the AFL for the finals and that just made this game super super lopsided we kicked 10 goals 9 for the game and that was the Bulldog score at half time we're out of it pretty much before the game started unfortunately but credit to the boys who did keep in touch early but unfortunately had this three goal run right at the end of the first quarter and that just really gave the Bulldogs a big boost and we struggled through the first um, 15 minutes of the second quarter, really keeping it as a scrap, but then they had another burst of three goals here, and then we came back with three goals to bring that back, but then they had another burst of goals, and then that just kept continuing, and it was, yeah, game over from there. So really, really disappointing for the Casey boys, really disappointing in terms of uh, being a fan of the VFL and enjoying watching it and wanting to go back to back in that because the team selection just really gave us no chance. It's just super disappointing. So that's pretty much all I'm going to say about the VFL because we weren't set up to win at all. That just is what it is. The AFL team definitely takes priority and I understand that. Um, But yeah, I think there's possibly a way for the VFL season to be run where maybe finals don't go concurrently with the AFL finals. Maybe VFL starts a little bit earlier because... The structure of that season is bizarre with the amount of buys and weeks off. And then, yeah, to have finals go concurrently with the AFL finals and then have the teams in the VFL side compromise really makes it a bit of a Mickey Mouse competition. And that's not going to help people who enjoy the grassroots aspect of VFL. Looking forward to the game on Thursday. It's going to be an absolute cracker the first AFL final since what 89 between Collingwood and Melbourne so I haven't really seen one in my lifetime because I would have been like three back then I'm really really confident going into this This is the most confident I've felt going into a final series I know I was confident last year but I feel like I shared the blind faith that Simon Goodwin had in our premiership players to just get it done despite how severely gassed they were and injured and just bruised and battered going into that last that, that final series we're in a great position we've won seven ever out of our last eight and we should have won that one against Carlton where Colling would have kind of splattered to the finish line a little bit they've lost three out of their last five and had a really easy game going into the final series against Essendon where they Essendon were basically witches hats where our last game going into the season against Sydney was the highest pressure game well from an opposition for that round and under all, under all the pressure and under all those teams that we've been playing uh, in the later parts of the season, we've come to the contest and we've done well. So for us to win this game against Collingwood, I think it's super important that we uh, win the territory game and we, we clog up the corridor like we did in Queen's Birthday. There's no doubt that Collingwood would have rewatched the tape many a time of Queen's Birthday and pulled out all the tactics we used to try and counteract that for this season. We worked so hard to deny them time and space by getting plays into the corridor and ta- and taking away those options. And then also they tried to switch a bit and we do really, really well at covering those switches like in the Hawthorne game when they were just going back and forth the whole time and grinding out uh, the win. I see us doing 
much of the same thing. And it's it's all really just going to come down to who wins the turnover game and who scores more off turnover between us and them. Their running power is an advantage, but then apparently it's going to hail on Thursday. And I know we've had all like all of our bad results has been in like uh, greasy or wet weather this year. Against Collingwood, it's not really going to favour either side. What we want to do is just try and make this look as much as a D's game as 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 we want. We want to be having lots of contests, uh, lots of ball ups, uh, pushing the ball out to the wing, clogging up that corridor so they can't transition through us. Their kicking is definitely something to be worried about. But their form gives me um, some hope because they just yeah they've had a few people drop out with injuries come in and out of the side. Uh, I just don't think they're at that fitness point. It's look it's going to be a tough game. Uh, they're they're favourites to win because they've finished on top, and uh, that's good for us going in as underdogs. I prefer being in that sort of situation. But we have the best fourth quarter record over the season and especially in the last few weeks we're a threat to them for sure like there's so many Collingwood fans that did not want to play us in this round and end up with us but they got us and you know we get to go play at the MCG and you know try and give Collingwood an extra game and give us a extra week off for the prelim they're going to come out firing on Thursday I do expect them to beat us in the first quarter but I expect us to pull it all back and grind it out by the last. That's how lots of our games have gone. This year, we let teams just attack, attack, and throw everything they can at us. We absorb it. We try to limit their scoring, and then we go on the counter with the turnover. But during the week, I rewatched round one against the Western Bulldogs and the Queen's birthday game, and Grundy was fantastic in both of them. And the only time he's played the last six weeks was against Carlton, and... He did better in the ruck against Tom De Koning and Pitnett than Gorn did. Like, Grundy got us back in that game when it looked like we were really behind. So I think a lot of the commentary around Grundy has been pretty pretty rough. Max Gorn came out and said that if he didn't have the C next to his name, he probably would have got dropped out of the team instead of him. And I found that as a really, really interesting comment. And it's either, it's either going to be Grundy or Tom McDonald. Like, one of those two is coming in for Melksham, who's going to come out. Fritch will be in that forward role Joel Smith might be used in that negating role against a Darcy Moore how much will Petrarca be used forward which will be really really interesting looking forward to having him swing through the middle as well up against a Jordan Degoe this is going to be such an exciting game can't wait but yeah hopefully we um get the win and move on to the preliminary final and wait to see who comes to face us there Anyway, that's uh, pretty much my thoughts for this week. Leave your thoughts in the comments below on the AFLW, the VFL, or what you think about us coming up against Collingwood this week. Thank you very much for taking your time to watch. This has been Yeah, The D's. Petrarca! Petrarca! It's just so special for such our club, our club, mate, our club. Lastly, after 57 years of pain, it's coming home.